Right on. Hey, everybody. We'll jump into the community meeting now. Um, excited to have a couple community presentations. Um, before we get to those, uh, make sure, as a reminder, ArgoCon North America is coming up. So check out the link in the Google Doc. Um, there's some great talks coming up um, in the workflows track, as well as the CD track, of course. Um, if you go into sketch you can sort and look for you know flag the talks that you want to go to um a lot of cool talks from contributors maintainers um jp and i are giving a talk i think terry you have a talk at um kubecon main event right yeah so yeah awesome so then also check out the uh the main event for talks there too um, and then, yeah, as, a, as an announcement reminder, if you haven't seen Argo Workflows 3.5 uh, was released as generally available now. So thank you, Terry, for all the heavy lifting on the release process there. Um, any quick announcements or release notes related to 3.5, Terry? Uh, nothing much. There's a no. There's there's gonna be some like upcoming issues soon, so be expected uh, to that. And don't use it in production yet. I guess uh, as the community is like, trying out. Um, yeah. Cool. Um. Yeah. I think there's a couple of known issues. Um. Yeah. I haven't heard of any giant regression so um, we are using it in prod right now um, I guess being one of the risky ones <laughs> but um, yeah having good success with that with our CI pipeline um, and please do raise issues if you run into them and we'll get into those as quickly as possible but that's exciting yeah 3.4 was released last year so this is the big minor release of the year for us um, in the workflows community and yeah, more feedback appreciated so we can incorporate um, a roadmap for the 3.6 minor release in the future. Cool, and now, yeah, let me transition to the community presentation. So we have two today, uh, one from Alexander and, and one from Felix. Um, yeah, excited to turn it over here. And as a reminder, if anybody else wants to present at the community meeting, simply, uh, reach out to me on the Argo Workflow Slack, or you can find me at my email, um, kalen underscore you at pipekit.io, and happy to get you on the agenda here for the next couple of months. But um, yeah, thank you, Alexander, for kicking it off. I guess I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So excited to show how we are using uh, Argo at Phrase. So let's see if my screen sharing is working. We see your screen, or at least I do. Right. <laughs> um, yep, yeah. so it's titled uh, No Code, No Problem. So how Price Orchestrate is using um, Argo Workflows API for our automations. And yeah, we'll give a um, short intro about myself, Price, so the company I work uh, at, um, and then the complexities uh, um, what we have in our industry and then why was orchestrator made and then a quick demo um so uh it's me uh alexander or alex i'm an engineering team lead at phrase um, live in Hamburg, germany and uh, my passions are elixir and building distributed systems and that over there is the link to my github and then um, Phrase, uh, so the company I um, work at, um, Phrase offers a uh, product suit to automate, manage, and translate all your content into the languages that your audiences speak. And we believe that when you unlock a language, you unlock opportunity. It's also a cool place uh, to work at, so if this sounds exciting to you, uh, then head over to phrase.com slash jobs. All right, then. So the complexities of um, automation set phrase. Um, so we uh, are in the uh, software um, localization business and we uh, integrate with a lot of different services like GitHub, GitLab, um, Jira, WordPress, 
um, many, many more. And uh, adding the integration directly into the product is it's a very hard um, thing to maintain. And uh, so you always yeah, need to hunt well, to catch the updates, make sure um, you update your code in time. And uh, yeah, just uh, for a small team, very hard to do. And another challenge is um, customers want to not only well, use a specific integration like GitHub, but they also want to um, have an automation where multiple um, services are used together. So to build it in a product is also a um, hard challenge. Then the other part is, uh, so the endless possibility. Um, so we um, even just, if you look at the our own internal APIs of phrase, the um, possibilities, what you can build with it as an engineer, as a developer are endless. And also um, our customers, they all have unique needs. So everyone needs like a little thing done differently than the other and how to present it to the customers in a user-friendly UI. It's um, yeah, close to impossible to do it for, for each one. And that's uh, when we thought, all right, so we need to approach uh, the problem differently and we build phrase orchestrator. And what it is, um, um, it uh, gives the customer the power to build actually anything uh, they want. Um, so it's a, a very user-friendly UI. You can um, drag um, actions, uh, connect, connect them together, so react to events, transform um, data in any shape you want. Um, so it opens up a lot of um, opportunities. And um, so how it's uh, done, um, in a nutshell, um, uh, we uh, base everything on, like, on REST APIs. So that's uh, what most of uh, phrase APIs are. So the REST, uh, the JSON, and we use the open API specs. We um, uh, transform like the specs a bit into a JSON schema, and you have a clear description. Okay, so what inputs does the endpoint um, receive and what um, outputs it produces? Uh, this we take uh, into our application and use uh, well, a nice library um, in JavaScript called JSON editor, where we can um, render all the forms dynamically to the user. So we don't need to build any um, extra code for it, um, just works. And then the user can um, edit, update all the parameters for each action. And it all uh, gets converted then to an Argo sensor, which we send over um, to Argo via the API. Um, sounds a bit complicated, but um, maybe the demo will uh, clear out some things. Um, so this is the interface of um, Orchestrator. So it's um, it's like a, a file um, browser, so you can create folders here. So I created this folder already. And then we're going to just create a new workflow. Let's call it Hello Argo. And um, yeah, typically, um, you build a, a phrase orchestrated workflow like starting with a trigger. So you need something that will um, trigger your workflow. So let's um, go here and um, search for one. The, the list is quite big. So it uses all the, um, the main events that can happen um, on our platform. Um, let's see. Yeah. So you can uh, scroll um, or find whatever you need. Um, I'm going to use. Um, uh, like a demo, just dummy trigger, just for demo purposes. So you just drag and drop it over here. And then you can start building um, your actions. You also you have here all the phrase um, APIs available. So maybe you want to do something um, related to a project and then just click it and then it gives you all the endpoints. You can take any one of them, drop it over here and then go to configure all the parameters. So this is uh, the part I was talking about with the JSON editor where uh, we know which um, params that this endpoint uh, takes in so we can render it to the user. Um, but didn't want to actually use this action for our demo. Let's use something just simple. 
um, what we can um, do here. Yeah, maybe let's add a just a sleep action just for the for the fun of it, and let's maybe sleep for ten seconds, and then we're gonna just echo something back. So it's this is uh, um, also just an action we use on the QA environment. Um, so it's not doing actually anything. It takes a message and then it outputs the same message back. So we're going to say, hello, Argo community. going to save it. And um, that's a very simple uh, workflow that I built. I mean, in real life, of course, it's um, more complicated. Um, you see here we have tabs like conditions and um, maybe this uh, seems uh, familiar to um, to Argo folks so it's uh, pretty much like the expressions that um, Argo um, uses and um, yeah you can do things like run um, multiple actions like in parallel so you can do things like that um, Again, we're gonna just test out the simple use case. So let's um, publish the workflow now. Let's do it over here. And so now this is published. So it's created um, a sensor in the cluster and we can um, send just a fake message to see that it really works. So I'm gonna do it in the, in the admin where we have like here, all the list of events, and then we can test um, all messages. So I'm going to send just one message, and it will say, yeah. hello. So then, now uh, this is the, the Argo workflow step. So we see it already triggered um, well, my workflow. And then Let's wait till it runs to the end. So this was yeah, the, the sleep one. So it's the suspend um, step for 10 seconds. This was uh, the echo action. And then we have the on exit hook that then notifies um, our system back so that the, the workflow um, finished. So we can go back over here. And then in the execution step, we should already see the succeeded execution, so we can click on it, and then we see, you know, here's our sleep. So it didn't produce any output, but then this echo one, well, this is the output um, that it returned. And um, yeah, so now if I'm happy with the workflow, I can just uh, leave it at that. If I'm not happy, I can go back to the editor, maybe make some changes, uh, deploy a new revision, and it will, um, yeah, work like magic. A pretty cool um, thing that Argo allowed us to do. Um, so we uh, built a user-friendly UI, and then Argo workflows handles all the complicated stuff, how to schedule the pods and the retries, and well, you know how it works. Yeah, I think that's it. So um, this um, yeah, leaves, then I guess, some time for any questions um, related to the product, or otherwise, I'm going to also pass it back then to my next presenter. Thanks, Alexander. Yeah, that was really cool. Anyone have any questions? Feel free to raise your hand or hop in. Uh, the graph editor is pretty cool. Are you planning to open source in any form? Well, uh, right now we're more focused on um, exposing more and more of Argo capabilities. Uh, to the end user because uh, there are so many other features that we are um, planning to do like custom scripting. So just also allowing users to, to write actually like small code snippets maybe for data transformations because even um, well with the actions, you cannot um, abstract uh, everything that the users want to do. So maybe um, they want to, you know, look, do a search replace and then call some endpoint like in the code. So we're going to do that. And uh, yeah, um, then it's also 
uh, evangelizing it to um, to the customers first, and then uh, yeah, we'll maybe think about open sourcing some parts. Okay. Now it's uh, a bit other problems to solve. Cool. Yeah, it seems like a lot of effort in the UI and some of the. We at, I think we have sorry, very similar functionalities in our workflows UI already. For example, um, I don't think your existing UI can support artifact artifact uh, visualization yet. So that's something you can leverage the Argo workflows UI for instead of rebuilding everything uh, from scratch. Yeah, we actually um, do also support um, artifacts. So this is. Okay. A new um, feature we launched in September, where before, like if the you know the, the output is 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 big, I think that's like a limitation of two hundred something kilobytes, and then so now we are using artifacts for um, such big outputs, and it just works. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Uh, just curious, uh, do you hit any scalability issues like uh, pop instances or retries issues like that in the background? Um, yeah, so we did encounter um, some scalability challenges. So one very uh, interesting that we solved was how to actually protect Argo and Argo events from a like a sudden spike of uh, events. So if it, uh, uh, yeah, if you send it 1 million events or something, uh, so we had uh, downtime um, because of that. And uh, so now we created like a, a back pressure protection where it's like resource aware, like how, um, well, how busy um, is Argo workloads and only then we uh, give it uh, more work and then Another challenge is uh, well, how to provision like enough uh, nodes, you know, to even like process the, all the messages and all the workflows in a reasonable amount of time. So this is uh, we're still um, solving it now, but um, um, I think was we'll, um, when we add auto scaling to the cluster, then it will also um, yeah be solved. Alex, did you face any issue uh, with respect to a uh, need to pause the events in sensor? Like the same thing that you mentioned, right? Like 1 million events got pushed into the event source and the mm -hmm. sensor is not able to... Pay. Like sensor will anyway create the workflows and it's going to overwhelm your Argo controller for sure. So uh, did you guys do anything around that? Um, yeah, so what we did, um, the events that the other... Um, systems in our platform are producing. They before they went to to RabbitMQ and then straight to Argo events. So and this was uh, the problem. So what we do now, they uh, go first to um, our our application. So to the, we just quickly write it um, to the database and then we'll use the um, the code we wrote to 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 check if Argo workflows uh, has actually capacity to process it and then uh, only send it like in chunks. We'll, let's say we give it like the next 1000 events and then we check, like, okay, so do you have now capacity? If yes, and we give it more and so on. And we also do um, already pre-filtering of events even before it reaches Argo. So let's say a user configured um, the, the trigger should only uh, well, well, the event should, should only trigger workflow if let's say a payload is like project ID equals like one two three four five, and then um, well, we we can actually already in our application check it if it, this will match any potential and sensors and only then send it over. Um, I hope this uh, answers your question. Yeah, I bet. So do we have any plans from the Argo side to support something like a pause resume feature in um, event source or sensor? Or do you guys suggest any other option? Like, instead of, like, I do understand that, yes, we can actually dump it to a DB and then kind of, like, you know, take some amount and then push it to event source, but it will be better if we have some back pressure over there itself. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's a, that's a good request. I'm not aware of that natively existing with Argo events. So please do raise an issue on that. I think we've seen other people solve it in their implementation of um, NATs or um, or other streaming events um, systems like Kafka. So yeah, typically it's, it's I guess, built in-house um, kind of similar to what Alexander mentioned. But if, yeah, I mean, again, if, if people open issues and comment, that's that's how things will get prioritized on, on Argo events. Yeah. Any other questions? I had one more question for you, Alexander. Um, yeah, what challenges did you run into, I guess, integrating the Argo API with your JSON, I guess, editor and schema? Um, curious to hear how that process went for you. Um, so integrating the, so the, the actual API endpoints of Argo it's, uh, was not a problem at all. Um, the endpoints all have uh, documentation. So uh, we only needed like a couple of endpoints, like publish workflow and publish something was cron related, um, a couple of more. So that was uh, pretty trivial. What the challenges also were is um, so most of the or orchestration is happening uh, in our product uh, via like API endpoints, right? So it's mostly HTTP calls. And uh, the way we wrote actions, they are all uh, containers. And if you think, okay, so how much time does it take to make a, the HTTP call? It's usually, I don't know, like 100 milliseconds, let's say. But then the overhead of um, well, starting and stopping uh, the container it's uh, like um, much much longer, so it's like maybe a couple of seconds or five seconds, something like that. Um, so how we uh, uh, try to overcome is by, by using HTTP um, templates, so that uh, uh, saves a bit of time. So the agent is started like once per workflow, and then if you have like a lot of actions, then it's uh, it's pretty quick. But also it has um, its own limitations. So there is, it doesn't work well also with uh, large um, outputs. Um, then you also you cannot mount uh, files into it. At least uh, uh, we didn't figure out how to do it. But um, yeah, so this is the the challenge. The performance is always um, a topic. So how to make workflows run um, fast. So we have a lot of um, volume of data trace and we're always thinking okay so what if the customer you know like has a lot of like events like how do we um, make it fast yeah and I think you you had raised an issue around the logging um so sort of like a ver observability for the HTTP template was that yep. right okay I guess is is that challenge then um really related to like having more featured HTTP templates would have helped you or what's um, kind of feedback related to that challenge? Yeah, I, th I think so. So if the HTTP uh, would be as flexible as containers or have all the capabilities, then we probably wouldn't need uh, containers um, in the first place. So all our actions are mostly just HTTP calls. So it's just then bringing the, or the the data that is in the action into the shape that the HTTP template um, supports. But uh, now we, well, we're still using the Docker image, so we use um, yeah, HTTP underneath. Yeah, it works well, but it's a container. Yeah. yeah, that start time, if you're doing a lot of those calls, then that's that can be challenging. Um, have you what thought of creating an uh, I mean, executor plugin for it? I'm sorry? Have you thought of creating an executor plugin for that use case? Um, briefly thought about it, but uh, not uh, <laughs> I haven't gotten to the trying it out. Okay. Yeah. So the, it, HTTP is also one of those that uh, has been intended to maybe be, it can be a lot more full featured as a plugin. It's one of the things that like ripe for 
being outside of the, the core order workflows. So yeah, if you if you have a really particular use case for that, it'd be great if someone could <laughs> help build that. Yeah, um, so we will definitely look into it. Yeah, Anton, could you share the link to the docs if you have it handy? Thanks. Um, Alexander, did you consider any other tools besides Argo for this, I guess, runtime for your your um, orchestration tool or product at Phrase? Um, yeah, so we have. Um, I think when we were developing it, we looked at some like off-the-shelf um, like ready products like uh, Kamunda, then um, AWS Tab Functions, then what else? Like Netflix Conductor, I think is the name. So yeah, so these are the ones we, we looked at and Argo um, was, uh, well, was the better uh, for, for us because um, with the strong points of uh, containers also, even though they are like uh, take time to to start and stop, they allow every team that wants to maybe write actions um, for orchestrated to develop it in their own like programming language that they can use. And uh, at phrase uh, we have teams so that uh, so some do um, Ruby, some do Elixir, some do. Java or JavaScript, um, and all this um, capability made a, a lot of sense to us. Right on. Well, yeah, thanks for presenting. This was really interesting. Um, if no other questions, we'll, I guess, pass it along here. Um, let's see here. I just shared um, quickly just to call out the plugin directory as well here um, that Anton mentioned, and these are open source. So if if anybody wants to contribute further plugins, please check these these docs out and get in touch with us. And we're happy to chat about that. Um, cool. Yeah. Next up is Felix. I'll turn it over to you. All right. So. I uh, hope you can see your screen. I've been having a quick talk about how to use Argo CD, Argo events, and workflows together at Kubernetes Community Days in Vienna. Uh, I'll strip down the presentation quite a bit because it was basically um, used to help people getting started with the Argo ecosystem. Um, how the different custom resources work, what are sensors, triggers, how you can use it to build applications, how to deploy your applications and have a coherent system for your CI CD um, issues that you have. And it basically started out as we are mainly developing Java enterprise applications, but also focusing on Kubernetes and OpenShift and wanted to try out the shiny new tool in comparison to like Jenkins, GitHub Actions and whatever customers had in use and wanted to share our insights, knowledge, and some starting points to the community. But we soon noticed that we had actually more than we needed. So in our initial tryouts, we only use GitHub, um, but realized that, for example, GitLab, Bitbucket don't support all the event types that we also needed for our setup. And another use case that was very specific, uh, especially for our development purposes, was we needed a way to configure workflows from a branch in the source code repository. For example, think uh, Java upgrade, someone uses Maven instead of Gradle, or the other way around, some quick configuration issues without having the whole workflow either in the source code. So we wanted to keep it reusable and uh, easy for developers. And we didn't want to put everything into the sensor as well as <clears throat> having to impact, for example, development branches when we try out uh, JDK upgrades on a different branch. Um, for the first use case, 
we did the Dinago event by just playing around with event transformation, for example, um, having a hacky workaround by knowing what our Git provider sends after a branch gets deleted and then transforming the original event, in this case, adding the delete event name so we can act on this in our <clears throat> workflows. But probably the more interesting use case is the branch specific configuration or as we've called it, multi-branch workflows. Um, so we basically built our own Jenkins file in a way by having a short little descriptor which can be easily adapted by every developer. So here, for example, you can see we can change the language even if we wanted to. So that's how we can reuse workflows. <clears throat> uh, language version, the build type, we can add extra configuration for the branch, um, change things like having a static code and things like that. <clears throat> and how it works is before having our own build workflow running, we have some kind of configuration workflow that gets triggered by Argo events, checks out this file from the branch that the code change is actually pushed to, and then feeds in the parameters into the corresponding workflow. And we are using a lot of templating in this, and we are templating our workflows at runtime. So depending on whatever is in the descriptor, we are calling different sub-templates, we are feeding the configuration in, and we also just call the image with the right versions as they are specified. And I've prepared a little demo for that. So I've just built an application earlier. Um, so this, for example, was built with Java 11, it did the whole workflow. And if we are just editing this descriptor here, and don't worry, I do everything you shouldn't do in a production environment. Uh, upgrading the JDK version, skipping tests, skipping everything else to just let the workflow get uh, triggers fast. And triggering that demo. Yeah, and now we see the initial workflow is started that is reading the event, checking out the workflow descriptor. And as soon as that's done, we should have our workflow running with the correct parameters. Yeah, so should not trigger the build in a second. And I guess while this is running, as I try to keep it short, there is time for questions if there are any. Congrats on a live demo. Nice work. And we'll see. Still needs <laughs> to build. Yeah, any questions? There it is. Running with the different parameters. How has the feedback been on this um, workflow among the engineers on the teams that you're working with? Um, they really liked it because when we first started implementing workflows in our organization, they were kind of overwhelmed, especially when they were coming from GitHub Actions or Jenkins with all those tailor-made plugins and you just write a few lines of code and you have your build workflow running and up ready to go. Um, 
so they delegated everything to kind of the DevOps teams, but they also wanted to have the flexibility to change things. And so far with this solution, they uh, they quite enjoy it. I mean, obviously there are coming new feature requests every now and then like supporting new types of integration tests and it's a work in progress, but Nice. And what was the original, I guess, frustration you had with Jenkins that caused you to um, assess Argo? Um, the problem was when moving into the cloud and into Kubernetes environments, Jenkins just didn't feel right anymore with having to give them so many privileges. Uh, also, spinning up new agents inside of your cluster and the main problem was also that we've been using Argo CD for every deployment already. So everything was managed by Argo, but then we couldn't really set up our Jenkins master and agents with Argo CD in a way that we like to. And also with, we couldn't uh, deploy our pipelines with Argo CD when it's uh, com uh, coming with Jenkins. So we tried Argo Workflows, we've also taken a look and implemented a similar things with Tecton and Pipelines as code, but it just didn't feel quite as well, especially in how it works together. And that's why we stuck with Argo then. Oh, cool. So you did uh, try a few other tools as well. Yeah. Tecton and Pipelines okay, as code. Okay. I, I am curious if you're interested in uh, open sourcing the job template to the the job the old job templates catalog that we have. Um, there is actually in a second. Great suggestion. <laughs> All the templates are open source in this repository. So if you want to pick them up, adapt them for the uh, job repository, go for it. Nice, thanks. Well, oh, I just shared the link to what you're referring to, Anton, <laughs> right? This is a catalog of templates and jobs. Yeah, we'd love to steal those, Felix, thanks. Any other questions? All right. Well, yeah, thank you, Felix and Alexander for these demos and presentations today. This is really interesting. And um, yeah, if anyone wants to reach out for either of you, what would work? If you have any further questions. <laughs> uh yeah so i'm reachable on the cncf slack or linkedin or via github if you want to um so basically wherever you can find me i'm ready to connect i'm also uh, dropping in into argo workflow slack channel once in a while so you can find me here there great Thanks, everybody. Um, we'll catch you next month, hopefully at ArgoCon on November 6th in Chicago. But if not, we'll have another community, community meeting in uh, November as well. So we'll see you then. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.